In my opinion, the way in which objections need to be handled has changed quite a bit in this last 20 years. And it's because society just operates very, very differently. We in the past have been taught and there's been all sorts of things written about handling objections. And it was really kind of a sequence of steps based in logic to kind of maneuver somebody out of an, an inaccurate assumption about what they're going to get for their money, right? So you find yourself in this position where you're kind of exacting a certain amount of pressure on someone to manipulate them into thinking the way you want them to think and fundamentally talking them out of the thing that they really want. I was never a big fan of this methodology, even though I did master it and taught uh, a lot of people basic handling objections by taking them through a sequence. Today, what we coach is something a little bit different, and that is we know that logic doesn't play a particularly large part in people's mindset today, particularly in a culture of self-entitlement that just absolutely runs wild. I want an Oompa Loompa, and I want it now. So as a sales professional, how do you handle that correctly? You can't go to um, an Oompa Loompa fight with a tool belt filled with all these logical tools because you're fundamentally not really understanding the situation. What you need to do is reposition yourself as an educator, educator, educator. You should be an expert in your market. You should be an expert in the process. If you're not, well, you know, that takes some work, right? Mastery doesn't come overnight. It takes time. And you're going to run across people who maybe know more than you do, quite honestly. Do you get in a fight with them about who's right, who's smarter, who's better, who knows what's going on? Absolutely not. What you do is you retreat to your secondary position, which is in fact just as important, which is you're not just an educator, you are a facilitator. You are the one that's going to help them facilitate this transaction to the best possible outcome that they can have. Simply state the facts. I'm sorry, the Oompa Loompa is not included in the price. Now, there might be a tantrum and there might be cold shoulder. There might be someone who launches into, no, 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 the Oompa Loompa should be included. But the truth of the matter is you are not a principal. All you are is an agent. Your job is to find middle ground between two opposing parties that are both trying to get what they want. Oompa Loompa is not included. Do me a huge favor. Simply state the facts. The fact is at this price, Oompa Loompa is not for sale. So do me a little favor. Some salespeople at this point will try to minimize the importance of Oompa Loompa. And they do this by either disqualifying the importance of it or trying to um, enhance other features of the buying experience that are going to be more desirable. For example, well, you know, I'm so sorry, but the Oompa Loompa is not included in the price, but look at that beautiful saltwater pool in the backyard. Don't do this. In fact, it's kind of tantamount. Um, think of your personal relationship where you might say something like, well, honey, you know, I didn't get around to mowing the lawn, but what I did do is I did, I got to the store and uh, I bought a case of beer. So, um, you know, people want what they want and when they want it, and when you try to talk them out of it or try to bolster up some other sort of argument, uh, that disqualifies the importance of it, you're going to position yourself for an adversarial uh, encounter. So in an interpersonal relationship, you know, that might get heated when it comes to trying to help a customer might get heated, but the odds are even better. The person will just shut you down and really not stop listening to you because you're not acting in their best interest. You're not listening to them and you're not letting them run through their course of action. Don't be quick to try to smooth it out. What I want you to do is let that customer take the time necessary to get some closure in their own mind. Closure is not going to come from you throwing all kinds of recommendations and <clears throat> mitigations at a problem. Closure is going to come when this person comes to the realization that Oompa Loompa is not included, but I am aware that I do need to make this purchase. I have a timeline. My timeline was never predicated on Oompa Loompa. My time frame was predicated on something else. Now, here's the issue. If you find out this person cannot find closure in this little time frame that you're giving them, Maybe you nudge them a little bit and just re-define why we are even looking at homes. Why are we looking at homes, right? Get that solidified in your head. If you don't know what that dominant reason is 
for this person wanting to transact in the first place, you might find that Oompa Loompa becomes insurmountable. If it does, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go ahead and put this person in your long-term follow-up and re-engage them when, in, when they're motivated to purchase. As I've said a thousand times, your number one weapon in this fight is really simply this. You got to have more prospects. If this is your only prospect, you have a problem on your hands. If you're prospecting on a regular basis and you're showing property to a variety of people and you're going on a variety of listing appointments, then all of a sudden, when this person starts finding an objection that doesn't seem very realistic and they can't get their mind around it, then their dominant buying motive is not strong enough to get them through a transaction. You need to reprioritize your time. I don't want to sound like I'm preaching because I'm not, but I have wasted a lot of time in the past with folks who just aren't ready, able, and willing. And just because I wanted them to be, it just wasn't so. So when it comes to handling objections, uh, do the same thing. All you're really doing is requalifying intent around the item that comes up and then balancing it against what their real time frame is and what their core motivation is. Stay administrative when you do this. You don't need to get passionate. You don't need to get emotional. You don't need to take a side. What you need to do is be Switzerland. Be neutral, administrative, direct, and educational. Do this, and also you're going to avoid the emotional oscillations that come uh, with dealing with customers. And if you're dealing with you know, 30, 40, 50 transactions per year, believe you me, you're having a lot of conversations that look like this, and they can take an emotional toll. Please hit that subscribe button and don't forget, visit our website and schedule your free 30-minute evaluation.